Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be here in Maine today. The, this is really, in a sense, the beginning of our campaign. And I've been traveling the state of Maine with uh, Ed Muskie, with Frank Coffin, who's the candidate for governor, with Lucia Cormier, who is the candidate for the United States Senate, Jim Oliver, your congressman from this district, and John Donovan and Dave Roberts. So we have traveled from Presque Isle, and we're going to speak tonight and go to Washington. Tomorrow morning, I fly to Alaska and speak at a dinner in Alaska tomorrow night. In a way, therefore, I'm covering uh, the oldest section of the United States, Maine, and going to the newest section, Alaska. But in a very real sense, both Maine and Alaska have the same problems, because they are the problems of the United States in a very difficult and dangerous time for us all. This campaign is important because the issues we face are important, and because what happens to this country is important. So I'm glad to be here, and I'd be delighted to answer any questions that the press might have. Yes? Well, I think that uh, we're hopeful uh, in Maine in uh, November. Ed Muskie has given uh, Maine the kind of leadership which I think uh, these other candidates, all of whom I know personally, I think the kind of leadership which they can give the state. There's an old saying, as Maine goes, so goes the country. I would uh, hope that we would do well in Maine, and that as Maine went, so went the rest of the United States. Senator, following Vice President Nixon's southern swing, he said, and I quote, the Kennedy-Johnson ticket is a real trouble in the South. Would you care to comment on this? Well, it, uh, we have uh, problems in the uh, South, and I suppose we have problems in all sections of the United States. The Democratic Party is a national party. It's the oldest party in the world. There are uh, farmers in it, working people, businessmen, ranchers, fishermen from Maine, miners. It covers the whole United States. And uh, I think the problem which that any candidates have for the Democratic Party is to rally all the multi-groups that have maintained the Democratic Party and put the national interest first. I think, finally, we're going to be successful in November. But it's uh, going to be a hard campaign, and it will be a hard campaign in the South as well as in Maine. I've supported Pastor uh, McQuaddy Bay Project uh, since I've been in the United States Senate. I have great hopes for it. It's now, of course, before the International Commission for them to make a decision. I hope that the United States and Canada can come to an agreement. It is going to be a great source of power for not only Maine, but I think the whole Northeast United States. I support the project, whether I'm in the Senate or the presidency. Well, I think the president should make the judgment on whether he attends the United Nations, uh, because he is the president and he's responsible for foreign policy until he is, his term comes to an end. And uh, I wouldn't, therefore, uh, attempt to suggest. This is going to be an important session, but I wouldn't uh, attempt to advise the president on this question. Could you explain why, could you explain why you and your kids Well, as you know, uh, we thought at least five or six bills were of great importance. Medical care for the aged tied to Social Security, the bill to increase the minimum wage to a dollar and a quarter, a bill for federal aid to education, a, and a housing bill. In addition, we wanted to try to see if we could do something on farms, uh, which uh, I think need particular relief at this time. We were not as successful as we hoped we would be. But I think a real difficulty is the fact that on the two bills which were most controversial, the dollar and 25 cent minimum wage and the medical care for the age tied to Social Security, we were informed in both cases that if those bills passed, the president would veto them. Now, all the president has to do to stop action is to veto any bill, and he needs only, according to the Constitution, one-third plus one of either body to sustain his veto. It's extremely difficult for us to enact legislation if a president is opposed to it. If I were elected president, I would indicate my support for these programs. And I think in those cases, then, the Congress would respond. But this way, when the 
Congress acts and is threatened with the veto during every stage of its action, it's extremely difficult with the division of powers in our Constitution to secure action. I think it was unfortunate for the public interest, the session, because I didn't think we got by what we should have gotten by. Uh, as you know, uh, we had a good deal of opposition on the other side of the aisle. Unfortunately, this was a session where, uh, which was where the political atmosphere was uh, highly developed. In the long run, however, I'm not so sure this session is a, is a loss. I think that the American people have seen in the last three or four weeks the difficulty of operating a governmental system where the President and the Congress hold different views on great public questions. I think there are sufficient divisions of power given to us in the Constitution without having a President of one party who is opposed to these programs and a Congress of another party which is committed to these programs. Now, if there's anyone who's listening to me who doesn't want action and doesn't want the Congress to carry out these programs, then this divided government is fine. But I think that what we need, and I think this last three weeks showed it, is a Congress and a President working together for progressive, responsible pieces of legislation. I'm committed to that program, and I think that uh, we've had a good evidence in the last three weeks why it's necessary to unite the President and the Congress and not separate them. Uh, one theme of the Vice President Nixon has uh, experience and maturity which are superior to your own. How yes, I've heard that said. The well, I think as far as our ages, they're very close. We both came to Congress 14 years ago, in fact, the same day. As far as experience, I've uh, been a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. I spent a good deal of my uh, life before the war, at least in the last years, traveling. I was in Soviet Union, I think, in 1939 and in Poland. I've been an active member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee in my service in the Senate, as well as the Labor Committee. I uh, have been concerned about foreign policy since uh, my father was in uh, London. And uh, my judgment is that the American foreign policy has been, in general, relatively unsuccessful in the last four or five years that the power and prestige of the United States in relationship to that of the Soviet Union and the Chinese Communists in the underdeveloped areas of the world has declined relatively. And therefore, I do not feel that the last uh, years have been so successful that we should move from those to an endorsement of uh, previous action. I don't think that you can suggest to me one new program in the field of foreign policy which has had general acceptance around the world that has been developed in the last years. Nothing comparable to the Marshall Plan, to NATO, to Point Four. And I think that what we need is a new administration with new people and new vitality and new ideas. Mr. Donovan? No, but what I am implying is that as we get atomic power as well as the uh, past McQuarty power, which will permit us to compete more successfully, as we're able to clean our rivers to make them uh, less polluted, as uh, we're able to uh, attract uh, new industries by uh, providing, I would think, a minimum wage which uh, puts us on par with other sections of the United States, as uh, we concentrate our effort on education, our colleges and universities, and schools, in order to have the most highly skilled people, in these ways, I think we can strengthen our position. Yes. Well, it means to try to uh, protect and nourish and develop our industries in this section of New England. Well, now, in the case of textiles, we have had some protection from the voluntary quotas, which have not been altogether successful. I've supported the peril point and the escape clause, uh, both of which are in the present Reciprocal Trade Act. I would not suggest additional uh, legislative action, however, on reciprocal trade. But I do think that it's a matter of great concern what's happening to our textile industry, and I do think we want to make sure that uh, the domestic industry is permitted to maintain itself. Uh, you mentioned there are problems in all parts of the nation, and I think one of the issues we've got to be respecting quite a bit is the Democratic fight 
on full clarity price support. Uh, what I would ask you is this, how would you convince the uh, main people of the rightness of this claim in view of the fact that uh, its implementation would uh, mean higher uh, grain costs for main farmers and uh, would mean uh, higher costs for the consumers of food products and higher taxes for our taxes? Well, I don't uh, consider that that is uh, an altogether accurate description of the Democratic plan. As to do with the OAS conference that was recently held, at that conference, I believe the United States agreed to several relations with the Dominican Republic. That's correct. I presume, in an effort to get the South American countries to go along with our uh, suggestion that they censure the Castro government. That's correct. To place restrictions on the Castro government. Now, we severed relations with the Dominican Republic. Granted, Trujillo is a dictator. At the same time, there are many dictators that we do recognize. Trujillo has never done anything to us. He is anti-communist. There is the possibility that a communist regime will replace him if we succeed in talking. Now, at the OAS meeting, all they did with regards to Castro is to adopt a vaguely worded resolution condemning the penetration of the Americans by communists, not even met, uh, mentioning Cuba by name. Do you think we were wise in severing our relations with Trujillo, number one, and number two, do you think that we were successful at this OAS conference? Well, I'll say that uh, I do think uh, our policy towards Trujillo is wise. The basic uh, wave which has swept uh, South America in the last uh, ten years is to have uh, independent governments within their own country. It's anti-dictatorship. Now, uh, the reason that uh, American policy in South America does not enjoy the high esteem which it enjoyed in the 30s during the period of the good neighbor was our intimate relations with the former dictator of uh, Venezuela, uh, our decorating Peron, uh, our intimate relations with dictators in several other countries. Now, I don't think that we can expect the people of Latin America to join us against dictatorships in the whole American hemisphere unless uh, we also uh, do not attempt to play the game both ways. The second point, which I think is a valid one, is that the Latin American resolution against Castro was not as strong as we wanted it to be. But that's, I consider, a very ominous sign, and that is that the Castro revolution has sufficient popularity in Latin America, both because it's directed against us and our stature is not strong there, and also because uh, too long people of Latin America have been denied their economic opportunity. Therefore, the Political leaders of those countries who I think are anti-Castro, without a doubt, were not politically strong enough to afford to condemn Castro out of hand. I think he should be condemned. I think he's a source of maximum danger. I think the big task of the next administration is going to be to contain this revolution in Cuba itself and not have it spread through Latin America. We did make progress to a degree. Not satisfactory, however, in my opinion. And I constant struggle is going to go on if we're going to isolate this communist uh, conspiracy into Cuba. Yeah. Senator Kennedy, uh, the House Inter-American Subcommittee today recommended that the U.S. retain complete control over the Panama Canal and in effect keep the U.S. flag flying exclusively. Uh, what is your view of this? Well, I think we should keep control over the Panama Canal. I think we also should be concerned with our relations with Panama. I think we ought to attempt to uh, make our occupancy of the canal, which is, of course, the middle of their country, as uh, palatable as possible. And I, the last part of your statement, uh, I would keep the American flag flying from the point of ownership, but I would certainly attempt to maintain uh, close relations with Panama. It's very difficult to operate that canal if it's operated in a sea of hostility. Well, I think the Democratic uh, Party, and I, I hope the candidates running, certainly the candidates in this state, and I think the candidates nationally, uh, I think are better prepared to meet the very revolutionary future which faces the United States and the free world. This administration has been in office in eight years. They have been in office during some of the most uh, uh, difficult and uh, trying periods. 
But I do think in that eight-year period, the image of the United States as the most vigorous, vital, and powerful country in the world has begun to dim. I mentioned in Presque Isle today a poll which Gallup took in ten countries asking those people whether they thought the United States or the Soviet Union in 1970 would be first militarily and scientifically. The Soviet Union won both of those polls in both categories in the ten countries involved. Now, I don't think in any doubt that ten years ago the United States was preeminent. I think it's extremely important that our power be great because we are so tied up with the cause of freedom. I think the Democratic Party is prepared to bring new people, new ideas, with a true recognition of the seriousness of the struggle that we face. Yesterday, Mike Wallace, he's the TV man, said that there's been a tremendous outbreak of what he called scurrilous religious literature, and he says that it's having this effect on some parts of the country. I wonder if it's your feeling that this, this work is, 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 is the work of a well-organized group, or whether it's something that's, that's coming from a, well, you know, a lunatic, lunatic fringe group and could be ignored. Well, I don't think it probably could be ignored, and I would be reluctant to think it came from uh, any organized group. There are a good many Americans who are concerned about the question of uh, religious freedom. The power of the president is great. And there are a good many Americans of goodwill who honestly uh, want to hear my views on the question of uh, religious liberty, constitutional separation of church and state, and so on. Now, I've given those views on every occasion that I'm asked, and I'm glad to give it again. Of course, I believe in the United States Constitution. Ed Muskie and Frank Coffin and I take the same oath that the President takes to defend the Constitution as members of Congress. And I would take that oath if I were elected President. And I take it uh, on the Bible. So that uh, I'm delighted if anybody asks me my feeling about it, and I don't feel at all reluctant to discuss it. I know there are a group of people who won't accept any answer, who, uh, who are not interested in my views on the matter, not interested in my experience and... Uh, and uh, not interested in what's happened in this country in our history where we all believe in it. Now, I can't answer them, and I suppose they're going to vote against me. All I say is they're really wasting their vote, because here in the most difficult time when we in this country are on trial as the great exponents of free government, if we're really going to spend the next two months discussing my church and where I go, I think would be a, my candidacy would be a great uh, would be unfortunate. I don't think that would perform much of a service. The purpose of this election is to discuss issues and give alternatives. Yes, you do understand the kind of literature that I'm talking about. I've seen it. It's sent to me, too. You do not believe that it's the work of any organized Well, obviously, it's organized enough to send it around the United States, but I don't, uh, I don't think, um, uh, I don't, I just feel we're going to uh, meet that problem. I've faced it before. I ran into it in West Virginia, and we emerged successfully. The state of Maine has shown that what it values is kind of uh, men it chooses for office and not what their religion is. That's why this country has been so successful, and I'm not prepared to say that we're not going to have a comparable experience in this election. My judgment is that come November, this matter will assume its proper proportion. Private person, what? Well, I uh, have only uh, seen a couple of polls since the election. I thought this last Gallup poll was about the way mine uh, was. It, uh, I'd say this is a very close election. <laughs> yes. After World War II, the United States had an undisputed uh, economic lead throughout the world because of the mass production. Of Today, we have equipped most of these foreign countries with the modern machinery we have, if not actually more modern than ours in many instances. Uh, their wages are very low. We have dropped our <coughs> tariffs considerably to accommodate their goods. I understand that recently, for the first time, foreign concerns have been, under, uh, been able to undersell us in Europe, and they're underselling us at home today. Now, if our wages here continue to spiral, limitations are placed on the amount of work that people may do, uh, how are we going to increase our economy by 5% a year? Well, let me say, in the first place, the balance of trade uh, is still uh, relatively uh, in our favor. 
Uh, where we have lost is because we have uh, maintained troops overseas. Uh, we've contributed a good deal to uh, maintain the economies of other countries. That is what has really contributed to the balance of payments run against us. The trade balance is still even, and in many cases is in our favor. I do suggest you uh, – I, I do agree that you have suggested a long-range problem, and that is how can we compete successfully with uh, not only uh, Western Europe but also uh, the Soviet Union. And I think it's going to be a matter of the greatest possible concern. We can stay ahead. I think that we're going to find a, good, a great investment in capital goods. I think by uh, – I think changes in some of our tax laws, we can stimulate reinvestment in uh, new machinery. I think our productivity is going to be maintained. I would say it's a serious problem, but it's one that I think is uh, – that it's possible generally to meet. And I don't think we should be, get the idea that what is causing us difficulty is that we pay decent wages. That, uh, in my opinion, I'm not interested in driving our wage level down. I think we're still meeting the competition, maybe not in every category, but generally we are and can continue to do so. Senator, in, in your prepared text of your speech in Manchester, uh, Manchester this morning, with reference to the uh, decline of the textile industry here, you listed the full use of valuable weapons against excessive imports as one means of reversing a serious decline. I gathered from your response to Donovan's question that you were opposed to fixing mandatory quotas or increasing tariffs in order to achieve this. Well, in the case of uh, well, in the case of uh, Worsted, we have a a quota in the sense that uh, when Worsted imports go over five percent, then the uh, tariff uh, changes. In the case of uh, cotton uh, textiles, uh, we have relied on the so-called voluntary system, though of course we do have some protection for cottons. All I'm suggesting is that while the Japanese have relaxed their imports in accordance with their agreement, we are getting a great uh, increase in uh, textile imports from Hong Kong and certain other countries. I think that these uh, must be a matter of concern. Several appeals have gone to the Tariff Commission, and uh, we have not uh, – we are still in rather a critical condition in the textile industry. I think that there is a proper proportion in every industry between imports and uh, domestic production. I don't want to see any domestic industry driven to the wall by excessive imports. And uh, that's my general view. And I say in the case of textiles, it, the last 18 months have been a matter of concern to me. Yes. Well, I uh, realize that that's what uh, the Republicans say, but they're entitled to do it. We didn't do as well as we could have hoped. But let's uh, take a look at two pieces of legislation to which I, ex I was extremely interested. One is housing, the other is education. Neither one of those bills came to a vote in the House of Representatives because they were bottled up in the Rules Committee. There are four Republican members of the Rules Committee, and not one of them would vote to permit even though the President requested housing legislation and aid to education, not one of the four Republican members of the Rules Committee would permit either one of those bills to come to the floor for a vote. Two Democrats joined with them, and I th think that was a mistake. But the four of the Democrats voted for those bills to go to the floor. Not one Republican Rules Committee would vote with us. Number two, we went to conference between the House and Senate on minimum wage. Six out of seven Republicans on that conference voted against not only the dollar and a quarter minimum wage, but also against the President's own program, which we finally offered as a compromise. Six out of seven Democrats on the conference voted for the dollar twenty-five cent minimum wage. Now, all I, I'll give you the fourth particular. In the case of medical care for the aged on Social Security, 45 Democrats voted for it and one Republican voted for it, even though Governor Rockefeller had endorsed it strongly and even though it was the most efficient and economic way to do the job. I think the record is quite clear in this Congress, and I think the American people are going to have to decide whether they want a repetition of the kind of negative, blocking actions which were carried on in this Congress or whether they want us to move ahead. Now, I, we cannot possibly challenge a president who's opposed to us. The Constitution gives him too many powers. All I say is the American people ought to decide whether that's what they want or whether they want to move ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, you have time for one more question. One more question. In a few days, David Manuel will be the first day to move to the 
uh, according to Main Central Railroad, we can depend all over the country. And some of the things is more important to be able to get to Bangor and Boston than to the moon right now. And I wondered if you had any uh, thoughts about uh, 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 the transportation problems all over nationally. If this is yes, well, I agree. I think the, the strike is a matter of of uh, the breakdown of the negotiations is a matter of the greatest uh, possible concern. I know that uh, the, uh, I'm, I'm sure that the president is extremely concerned and that I'm hopeful that he will use the, the influence of his office to attempt to uh, have uh, the uh, two groups reach an agreement. In the final analysis, there is a very important public interest, quote, as well as the interest of the parties, and I'm hopeful that uh, the president can serve as the bridge. Let me say uh, finally that I guess we're all finished. I want to thank uh, uh, Ms. Cormier, who I hope is going to serve in the Senate, and Frank Coffin, who's a candidate for governor, and Jim Oliver, and uh, who's the congressman from here, and John Donovan, and uh, all the uh, rest uh, who I think uh, would serve as a first-class team for Maine. We finish here, but we're coming back. And I think that uh, we have in this state of Maine a great chance to demonstrate that we have a new frontier. This is an old section of the United States, but I believe that its promise is still bright. And I'm going to carry that message to Alaska, and I hope that Dave Roberts and all the others will be traveling the state of Maine uh, with me when we come back in October. Thank you very much, everybody. We're glad to see you. Question. May I have your honor? Sure, I, 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 I,